Welcome to lesson 12 of Learn C. And in this lesson, we're going to uh, do error checking, making sure that uh, the inputs are to this program are working. And we're going to introduce a new um, a control uh, situation called if and else, the if-else statement. And uh, we're also going to do a little house cleaning stuff. Um, uh, so what I've done is uh, I've taken the input of the, the um, main program from file 11, I mean from lesson 11, and I've put it in here in lesson 12, and also in lesson 12. If you see, I've got, um, uh, so just the project right now, I don't have the executable yet because I haven't uh, compiled it, but I have, o, again, 010 and 01000.txt. So that's what I've done here. And um, uh, the, if you remember from last time, when we argv is the we bring in the filing um, through this argv from the outside from the command line. If the file doesn't exist, it just gives us an error, and that's really sort of um, a problem here in that um, we want to make our code a little more error check. I mean, when you use a, a point and click professional software, it says, "Do you really want to do this? Are you sure?" You know, it has all sorts of checks to make sure that everything's right. And if it doesn't, if the file doesn't exist, it goes, "Bing!" File doesn't exist. So let's do that here for a C program. If p is equal to the null character print f file not found. All right, so um, there's a couple things going on here. Um, the first one is this new control structure, if, and also if else. So we're going to do if and if else. Uh, we're going to do if and else in this thing. So um, if is if a conditional statement, and then in brackets, do, do whatever's inside the brackets. And then it doesn't have to be followed by, but it can be followed by an else, else. Bracket stays. You can also have else if, so if this situation, else if this situation, so it's situation number two, else if, and so on and so on, and the last one could be else. You don't have to have an else at the end for any of those strings of, um, of else's, of ifs and if else, else ifs. Hmm. So, so that's one thing, is this is this new structure if. If this condition is true, do this, otherwise do that in the else statement, right? If, um, uh, so now we have three control structures. We have the for loop, the while loop, and the if else statement. If else is a control, control, control structure that only does something once, whereas while and for loop through stuff. While does it until this condition is not true. For does it for a, a, a standard number of times. And the, the conditional statement here is, is FP, the handle that came back, equal to null? Null is, this, it is all caps, and it's a lot like, if you remember, the EOF um, uh, variable. These are global variables that are set by in C that are equal to a value. You don't have to know what that value is if F open returns minus 1 or minus 7 or whatever the number is. When if the file doesn't really open, if the file doesn't open successfully, you don't have to know that. You just have to know null, that if FP comes back null, that means the, the F open operation didn't work successfully. That's what that means. So um, if it's null, we just want to end. The, we just want to end the program. Really, F close P. We always have to do that, even though it's successfully open. I'm still going to do that just in case. And then inside the else, I want to do everything else. I want to do this command. If it did open successfully, I want to do all the stuff in here all the stuff down to return zero. I want to do all that stuff. And then I also want to F close at the end. So that's F close here. So that works. But here's where the house cleaning stuff comes in. It has to do with brackets and it has to do with indentation. So if you notice, I've indented, um, you know, so main isn't indented, right? This thing isn't indented. But once you get to this main bracket that's paired with the bracket way down at the bottom there below return, that one, right? This bracket, everything else is indented a little bit. And once, and when I look, if you look at this while statement, 
everything inside the brackets of the while statement and is indented. This really helps. C doesn't care if we put spaces or returns or anything like that. It doesn't care. I could put as many returns there, right? I can have as many spaces as I want here. It, it doesn't spaces and returns. It doesn't m many much of the time. It doesn't really care. There are some situations like you don't want lots of spaces in between the open parentheses and the if statement, for example, and you can't have spaces right after the f close command in the open parentheses. So, so some places spaces are bad, but in general, to make it look pretty, spaces and returns are okay with um, C. Um, you could make it all flat and make it all on that left um, margin there it would be really hard for other people to see. The convention that we use is once you use the square brackets, then after that you indent. So in the else statement, we have to indent all these uh, commands. And for some reason, it, if you saw, they, it highlights it so you know wh which ones match, which is nice. I always make sure that it lines up with the else statement. This just makes it much, much easier to read. If this is true, do everything in this indentation, else do everything in this indented thing before the end of that. It also makes it easier for you to match curly braces. So that curly brace is matched with that. And that curly brace is matched with that. That's one of the main problems with uh, algorithmic problems where you don't get an error or a, you don't get an error message or a warning. However, the program doesn't work right because you didn't put the braces um, in the right spot. So that's how you do error checking with the if and else, right? Um, if you get the error condition, bug out, else do the entire program. That's a, a common way to do it. And now we're looking at this. Um, at this system of indenting to make the code look more readable to the average viewer. All right, so that's, um, that's what I want to say there. Oh, the other thing that I want to say is for if, while, and for, if there's only one command after it, you don't have to have the curly braces. It's, it's not required. If there's just if and one statement, you just have to do if, then the in, and I would definitely indent, do the one statement and then, and then else and then one statement. It's very rare that that happens, and my this is just advice section, is don't exploit that um, uh, ability of C. If you have an if and else, if you have a while loop, always use curly braces, even if there's only one um, line. It's, believe me, it just gets you out of trouble, and it's good general practice, and it helps other people read it, even though it's a waste of two whole characters. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get carpal tunnel syndrome from uh, typing two extra characters, right? So that um, um, uh, it's worth the extra two characters for the sake of clarity of the program, for the sake of making sure that everybody else understands what you're trying to do. Um, it really helps. So that's my that's helpful hints from uh, old guys on that. So let's um, let's compile it. Let's save it and let's go execute it. Compile. Click. I don't again. I'm going to run it from the command line because it uses argv. Command prompt. Now that I've compiled it, there is an executable file. And so um, lesson 12.exe 010.txt. Yeah. Lesson 12.exe 02.txt. file doesn't exist, file not found. Worked. So that's error checking and a little bit of house, the if else statement, that's an important new control system that we control feature that we have. And um, uh, and also this uh, house cleaning thing of indenting, making sure that your code is indented properly when a curly brace comes around. That's it. That's lesson 12.